which chapter? 43rd chapter. Before I attempt to teach this, Elizabeth, may I impose on you to say a word of prayer for me? There's a beautiful story in the Bible of a man named Joseph. He, uh, he had 11 brothers. They were the tribes of Jacob, who was renamed Israel. And uh, he had a dream at one point in, in his life, early young man. His daddy favored him above his brothers. Uh, it's not good to favor one kid above the others. If they ever catch on that they're favored, you know, if they ever catch on that they're preferred above their siblings, it can create storms in the household. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so you don't want to do that. <clears throat> Even if you like one of them. When David comes home, I tell him I, I like him above Tommy. And then when Tommy comes home, I tell him I really didn't mean that I like him <laughs> above David. I, I try to keep my prejudices <coughs> open and above board with them. They know that I love them both <coughs> equally. Your Father in heaven loves you as much as he ever loved anyone. You are as favored to him as Billy Graham is and was. He loves you just as much as he does the great men and women in time gone by. Just as much. He died for you just as much as he died for them. <clears throat> anyway, Jacob, uh, Joseph didn't have the, the best sense of a of a sibling young who was favored, he told his brothers <laughs> how much God loved him above them by telling them a dream he had. In my dream, you all bowed down to me. I'm paraphrasing it, you understand, but it's in there. And uh, he dreamed a dream, and he dreamed it several times, and each time he blabbed. <laughs> the last time he told it, he even mentioned that the sun and the moon would bow down meaning his father and his mother. And father understood what he meant he, and, and chastened him, smiled and said, you mean even your mother and I are gonna bow down to you? It's just not a good thing to do, to tell people that, that they're gonna have to worship you. <laughs> just don't do that, <clears throat> try to control your tongue. But the dream was true, it was absolutely so. Anyway, the brothers became so enraged in the passage of time that they stripped off his coat of many colors, splotched it with lamb's blood, and told daddy that Joseph had been eaten alive. <clears throat> Pardon my voice. <clears throat> Pray for my voice. Amen. So, uh, and they sold him into slavery, into Egypt. And uh, Joseph ended up down there, and you know the story of how Pontifar, Pontifar hired him, and he was doing good for Pontifar's books and income, and Pontifar's wife, developed a lust for young David, uh, young Joseph, and went after him, and the boy was too clean to allow that, and so he got, ended up getting put in prison. And then he interpreted dreams for two men in the baker and the butler in prison, and, and told one that he would be killed, and the other he would be restored. And the other one was restored, and after the passage of several years, Pharaoh had a dream, and Pharaoh, God works through dreams, now, don't get too led by your dreams. It might be too much pizza. But if you get a dream from God, I don't think you can get a bad dream from Hershey bars. That, 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 would, that would ruin my doctrine. So any, but anyway, <clears throat> he had a, his, Pharaoh had a bad dream, and he saw some cows come up, and some were fat and some were lean. And he saw some wheat come up, and... He had this, these double dreams and, and he was in a quandary and none of his wise men could tell him what was going on. 
So uh, at that point in time, the uh, butler who had been restored from the jail through Joseph's dream remembered, ah, I know someone who can, try, can tell you what your dreams mean. And so they sent for Joseph, and Joseph uh, came before Pharaoh, cleaned himself up and out of prison, and, and uh, shaved himself, and prepared before Pharaoh, and interpreted the dreams. You know the story. Uh, the dream was a revelation from God that Egypt and the whole known world was going to go through seven years of famine, great famine, and then seven years of plenty, or vice versa. Seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. So if you're smart, you'll lay up two years' worth with each, you know, and you'll have when the, the one work runs out, you'll have the reserves. Well, the famine hit up in Canaan where uh, Joseph's daddy was and his 11 brothers. And, uh, and they, be, they came down to Egypt, sent the boys, uh, Israel, Jacob, sent the boys down to, to find some food. And they came down, and Joseph goes through a, a long testing process with them. They don't recognize him. Twenty years have elapsed. And from the little boy that was sold into slavery, he's now number one in the land under Pharaoh. He runs the program. He's in charge of the food inventory and everything else. And the Egyptians are going to do well. The famine was sore, S-O-R-E, sore, heavy, awful in the promised land, Canaan. And, uh, and so they came down, and he went through several tests with the boys to find out whether they really had changed his brothers, whether they still had hard, wicked hearts or not. And uh, here in the 43rd chapter of Genesis, beginning at the uh, 24th verse, the man brought the men unto Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their asses, that's their donkeys, provender, food, and they made ready the present against Joseph, and Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him in the present, which was in their hand unto the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. Um, I, I love my country. Do you love your country? Amen. Amen. One of the trademarks of America when she puts her flag on display, marches in a parade or with other nations, the American flag isn't dipped to any other nation on the planet. Others can dip theirs if they wish, but we don't dip ours. The first time I saw our flag dipped was uh, in uh, not Trump's administration, but the one that preceded him, and it offended me. It offended me because it sent a message to me that that, and, and the president at that time said so, that our country was really no different from any other country. I beg to differ. Amen. 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 God gave me this one. I don't know about theirs, but I beg to differ. This one is different. Amen. Uh, it, it is not a race of people. It's a conglomeration of races from all over the world who came together. Have we some tragedies and histories and, uh, and bad stuff in our history? You bet. From the way we treated Indians and blacks and we white people and, and the way Indians treated us, they can pretty, be pretty brutal. <laughs> and, and so there was a whole lot of bad stuff in our past, but there was a whole lot of good stuff. The Constitution is a good document. Amen. Breathe through with the breath of God. Hey, uh, it isn't equated with the Holy Scriptures. But it has a lot of scripture in it. Amen. All men are created equal. Well, that's right out of God's heart. That's right out of God's heart. Certain inalienable rights. And, and that's right out of God's heart. We have rights. And uh, I think our country's done better reinforcing that for mankind in general than any other country in history. And it tears my heart out to see what we're going through now with the tearing down of fundamental biblical principles that we had enshrined and codified in our laws. Men and women are different. They're different. Amen. And, and uh, homosexuality is a sin. Amen. Amen. Did you know the Pope of the Catholic Church said that the other day? I was right proud of him. I'm not a Catholic, but I was proud of him saying that. He said he forbids his priests, I'm paraphrasing, he forbids the priests from performing 
the same-sex marriages because he wanted to allow them to endorse sin. Amen. Amen. That was pretty bold of him. Amen. Now, he'll pay the price for that in the media, but one of the badges of, that's worth wearing is, is being tormented by today's media. That's worth being. I mean, you know, I don't want to say everything they say is wrong. Uh, just 99.8%. Well, some percentage. They say a lot of stuff that's wrong. The liberal agenda is not my agenda. Joseph is down here in Egypt, and he sees his brothers. Uh, verse 25, they made ready. The present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand to the house and bowed themselves to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare and, he, and said, Is your father well? This is what he said in his heart. He could hardly contain himself. All 11 brothers, are, well, 10 of the brothers are there. And uh, Benjamin stayed up with daddy, but uh, the youngest brother. But Joseph, who hadn't seen his brothers in 20 years, the last experience had was they sold him into slavery. They dropped him down in a well and, and went off and abandoned him. And uh, is your father well? Is my daddy well? The old man of whom you speak, is he yet alive? That's what's in his heart. Is he yet alive? Is he living? He doesn't know. And they answered, thy servant our father is in good health. Now at this point in time, he's about 130 years old. But he's in good health, Jim. Our father's in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance to him. That's an Asian custom. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, I guess he did come down, and said, Is this our young, your younger brother of whom you spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. Now Benjamin didn't recognize him either. 20 years, a long time. And Joseph made haste for his bowels the King James says which means his heart for his, for, made, his heart did yearn upon his brother and he sought where to weep and he entered into his chamber and wept there may I say explain that he's about to bust out in tears and so he pulled himself back from them and went into a room so they wouldn't see him weep and there are many places that follow here where he wept bitterly now, if you would, go with me to John chapter 11. I was reading a little publication the other day, and it had this phrase in it, and it struck me. Um, if you want to reach God, weep. Being a boy, Harlan, you're a boy. Us boys are sort of taught not to. You know, our culture doesn't exactly uh, smile on boys that weep. But there's nothing wrong, Al, Justin, there's nothing wrong with crying. Amen. Nothing wrong with it at all. Right. And by the way, if it'll get me through to God, I think I'll just start right now. Amen. <laughs> you get through when you use the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. And so here we have in John 11, verse uh, 35, the shortest scripture in the Bible, quoted all the time. Jesus wept. See that? Jesus wept. Now, he wept at the same time Mary is bawling. And I submit that they, though they're both weeping, they're not weeping for the same thing. To read the narrative around this, you'll find, I believe, fairly clearly that Jesus is not weeping because Lazarus is dead. He knows what he's going to do with Lazarus. He's weeping for the, for the unbelief of his followers that they don't recognize who he is and what he has the power to do. He's raised dead before. But they, yeah. what is it about us that keeps us from believing the majesty of God after we've even seen it a few times? Doc, I can't explain it. It's almost like we have to be taught faith all over again. Again and again and again and again. 
And then uh, go with me please now to Luke chapter 19. And we'll see where Jesus weeps again. 19 verse 41. If you want to pinch a baby and make baby ball, this would fit in with the message <laughs> as baby starts to weep. You remember when, remember when baby Moses was floating by the, the Pharaoh's wife in the River Nile in a basket where he'd been hidden? And, and, uh, and the, she opened the lid and saw the baby in there. Billy Sunday, an old preacher of a bygone age, said that what an angel did that was watching over it, it pinched baby Moses on the butt so the baby would cry because that instantly melted Pharaoh's daughter's heart. Is there anything that will melt your heart quicker than hearing a baby cry? So you feel free to go right ahead if you wish. <laughs> the choreography would be beautiful to hear a baby cry. Luke 19.41 And when he was come near Jesus... He beheld the city and wept over it. Both these occurrences are on the side of Mount Olivet, one on the eastern slope and the other on the western slope of Mount Olivet. And one, he, he, he weeps because of a lack of faith and belief in him. And the other, he's weeping because the people of God don't know who he is in Jerusalem and they're going to go through some terrible experiences because they don't know good kid. Good kid. I started studying and looking around in places where people wept. And you know, it's consistent. Because you see, weeping means there's passion involved. There's ardor. There, you're, there's something you're giving that's more than you've given before when you just break down and sob and bawl. When all of a sudden the realness of God and what he went through is more than you can contain, then believe it, you're ready to receive from God. The fact that you won't weep, that I'm too stubborn to weep or too embarrassed or won't weep, it, it robs me of some of that relationship's precious strength. God's weak strength is made perfect in our weakness, he says. So when you and I drop the guard, take the mask off and get real, God can move. And oh, how we need God to move. Amen. When they pronounced my son going blind, and I had my oldest son in 1984, and, and he was, and it was going to happen pretty quick. He had retinitis pigmentosa. No cure. Except him. And I confess, I was, I was crushed. I, I didn't know what to do. I'm a preacher that believes in divine healing. I've seen it time and time again. But this hit my son. And the thought of him never being able to see my lovely wife's face again was enough to break my heart to where I wept. Openly and honestly and unashamedly. God must have heard. I brought the son in here and many of you were here then and you came and you laid hands on him and Annie and I. And two weeks later at Johns Hopkins, Wilmer Eye Institute, Dr. Ronnie Michaels looked at him and reamed up and said, retinas clear. Amen. There's nothing wrong with your son's Praise eyes. God. And I said, Praise the Lord. Amen. And then I laughed. And laughing is a beautiful thing to occur on the other side of weeping. Amen. 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 The children of Israel, the Bible tells us, came out of 400 years of bondage with a, high with a high hand. They came out singing. Well, all of them weren't 30 years old or 20 years old. Some of them were 90 years old. Some of them were probably a good deal older than you. But they came out with a high hand and the Bible says there was none feeble among them. They had spent the night in tears while the Passover, the death angel passed over them. They had spent the night in, in, in as close as you can get to God and get to God, and he met their need. If you want him to meet your need today, 
He will. Amen. But you've got to get real. Now you can tune me out, but you can't tune out this word. It's too real to tune out. Amen. If nothing I said touched your heart at all, then perhaps this will. Would you stand to your feet? <coughs> Everybody that's able to stand, stand. Every head bowed and every eye closed without anybody looking around. If I see you looking around, I'm going to come back there and kick you in the shin. No, you know, I'm not going to do that. But don't be looking around. This is between you and God. This hasn't got anything to do with anybody but you and God. You've had needs in your life, in your heart, and you don't know what to do with them. And I'm asking you right now, just take it to Jesus. Because He loves you. He wept over you, and He's died for you, and He rose again, and He's here for you. No looking around. And if you're that one person, I want you to slip a hand up right now and show me to pray for you. Yes, one, two, yes, three, four, yes, five, six, yes, seven, eight, yes, nine, yes, ten, yes. Anyone else? Come on in. Come on in. Father, you saw the heart. You saw them, Lord. Yes, Lord. You heard them, Lord. It's you. It's them and you. Nobody else. They're on holy ground. Father, they're reaching out to you. Reach down to them now, O oh Lord, and comfort and shield and protect and bless in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Now, Amen. now you're refreshed in the Lord. He's with you. He's with you. And good news. He promised He will never leave you and never forsake you. I mean never. Never in a long time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you and God make his face to shine upon you and guide you and keep you and use you in every place he takes you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now before you scat downstairs, I bless the food that's down there. Amen. Particularly the chocolate stuff. <laughs> but I bless all of it. And, uh, and, and nobody is going to get sick from eating any of it. So Amen. in Jesus' name, we, we thank you, Lord, for the food and the fellowship. Now make your way down there. And, uh, and if it's possible for Helen and, and Doc and Ernie to get in front of you, fine. Uh, but you don't have to just wait around. You can head downstairs. Pray.